In this video, I'm going to talk about lambdas in C++. So lambda is also called anonymous function. Uh, it's good for like a simplify like one line function that you could define, and then people usually use it if it's for a short lifetime, like maybe one or two times that's used in your program. And it's also good to be used to pass in a uh, function into a function, which will go in at the end of the video. So that's usually like a special application that we'll talk about. Um, but some of the main things to really hammer down is the syntax, because it looks very ugly and can get confusing. So we'll show you what that's all about. So let's go ahead and make a program. We're going to say include IO stream, make our main function. So inside our main function, we're going to first go over how you could use a lambda with a name. So maybe you want to name your function, because sometimes you may not want to name it. We'll go over that too. But let's say we have auto average. And then the syntax is going to be these brackets here. That's actually called uh, your capture terms, which is if you have variables inside um, your program locally somewhere that you want to integrate into your function, you could put your parameters there. But for now, we're not going to use it. We'll show you some for that later. And then it's going to be followed by parentheses, which is your input arguments to your function. So here we're going to have float num1 and then float num2. OK, so those are the input arguments. And then after that, it's going to be followed by a dash arrow and then followed by a return type. So float. And then inside, it's going to be um, what your function is actually doing. So we're going to say return num1 plus num2, and then divide by 2. Stretch that out a little bit so you can see better. So we're going to need the semicolon to show us the end of the function, and then the semicolon to end the auto average line. OK, so that's how you would create your lambda function. You can see a lot of syntax is happening here. And then you have a float, my average equals average, and then pass in arguments one and two. So that's how you could actually call the argument. So here we're actually using auto, because uh, if you didn't use auto, what it would actually look like would be something that looks like this. You have a star average, and then you'll have a float, comma, float. So all of this garbage is the same as auto here. OK, so you pick your poison, which one you want to choose. Um, in this case, we're going to use auto because it's just cleaner. So we have float, my average, and then let's add a return 0 so we have a place to put our breakpoint. And you will see that you will see that our my average uh, results is going to be correct, which should be 1.5, and it's 1.5. Okay, so we can see our program is working. So let's exit the debugger. Okay, so that's one way of making a lambda, and that's where you would name your function. So now we're going to talk about how you could do it without naming it. So we will have pretty much everything we had here. I'm just going to copy this. But the main difference is um, instead of setting it to something, we're going to set it to our result directly. We're going to call this my average 2. And then what's going to happen is like in the end, it's where you pass in your input arguments. Okay. So if I run this, you should see my average 2 should also be correct. So if I start debugging, you see that my average 2 is 1.5. So this is completely one line. It's like combining uh, the two lines we have up here into just one, because it's creating the function through here and then passing in the arguments through here into the function. Okay. So now we're going to go over uh, using the capture terms if you have some local variables in your program that you want to utilize. So we'll have like a float x, um, float x equals 1 here. 
and then float y equals two here. And then you do auto uh, auto average two. And then here we're gonna pass in x and y, and then actually no input parameters to the function. We're just gonna use those variables locally, and then specify the return type, which is floats. So all of this stuff here is gonna be the same. I'm just gonna copy it. It's faster. Okay, so we're gonna return all that. And then actually here it's not all the same because instead of num1, num2, we're gonna put x and y. So what this does is it's saying that we're gonna take um, x and y from the local and then uh, put it into the program and run it, okay? So that's what's happening. And notice that it says value of x cannot be used as a constant. Expected expression must have a constant value. So what does that mean? Okay, so right here we just need to add in the equal sign. That's why it's not happy. So now this should be fine. And then we're gonna store our results. We're gonna say float my average three. It's gonna be average, oops, we average two. And then we don't pass in anything because this is gonna directly take X and Y because you can see here is empty input arguments. So if I run this, start debugging, we should see that my average three should be the same, which is 1.5, okay? So that's working. So that's how you could call a Lambda function using terms in the capture um, section. And then we could also do the same thing where it's like a wine liner call. So what you wanna do is take all this stuff and then we could define a float my average four and set that equal to all this stuff and then pass in no input arguments, which is what this um, open and close parentheses at the end is doing. So if we run it in debug, we should see that my average four should also say 1.5. So we see that that's also working. Okay, and then lastly, the final application where you're passing in a function into a function. So we're gonna go over some, we're gonna use vectors here and don't worry if you don't know what that is yet. We'll go into that later, but let's just assume right now vector is something you could use to store information. Um, that's really all you need to know for now. And then we also need to include um, algorithms to show our example here. So we're gonna create a vector just to hold some numbers. And then it's gonna have integers inside. And again, don't worry about it. Uh, we'll go into that later. So we'll have uh, unordered nums. And then we're gonna define like three, two, maybe five, and then one. And we're gonna call the sort function, which will order it in some way that we define. So we're gonna have unorder.nums pass in the start and then un, unorder dot um, end, which is the end. So here is the part that you pass in the function. So we're gonna pass in um, our lambda function. So int num1 and then int num2. So the function will take in two input parameters and then it's gonna return num1 is greater than num2, okay? So what this says is, um, so this says is that we're gonna pass in a function into our function and what it's gonna do is gonna check uh, the number, this current number is bigger than the other number we're comparing with, then it's gonna rank, rank that order in this behavior that we specified. So we'll just print it out so you can see. So there's a special way of printing for vectors. This is gonna be the syntax. We'll go over that later, more later on. Um, so right now we'll just do C out and then print the things in there. So if we do that and run it, 
you see that it's five, three, two, one. So what does actually happen is it ordered from biggest to smallest, and that's what it's doing. And I can also make this a less than, then it should reverse the order. And you can see it prints out one, two, three, five. Okay. So that's how you could use lambdas and applications, um, specific applications where you're passing a function to a function. And then you can also do like one liner functions or just simple functions that you'll discard later on. So if you found this video helpful, give a like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.